Yeah, right, boys, going on? Welcome back, Docs FC. Five wins in a row. Uh, it's episode 35, Docs to Glory. Today, returning with the halfway point of the season, or after a great run of form, five wins on the trot, four clean sheets on the trot. Uh, we are now in the top four for the first time this season. Going to try and stay there today and extend the unbeaten run. Uh, we've got the January Trans window opening, the FA Cup third round as well, so loads of stuff to get through. Let's get straight to it. First game today, Aston Villa at home, aiming to possibly go six points clear of fifth place. Let's see if we can do it. Hope you guys keep him warm in this cold snap, as they call it. Oh, it's not for me, this. Not for me. Absolutely freezing this morning, honestly. Just walk into the bus stop, like... <laughs> honestly, I was tempted to walk back home halfway there. I think I, think I need another layer. I'm not for this weather, man, seriously. I said it before. I genuinely think I'd be so much happier in a Mediterranean or a South American country. Nice and warm, Rio de Janeiro. Yes, please. Watch that free ball. Watch that free ball. There it is. Oh, it's a great finish as well. All right. Okay. Big win away at Anfield, but poor start here. Already a goal down. 17 minutes in. Okay. Long way to go. Tough start. This one's got going. Yep. Yeah. Aston Villa looking a better team. It's always these games where you go into them expecting to be bankers and like you come off a massive win away. And oh, it just, it's just not, you're not feeling it, you know? Definite pen, no complaints. Branco came through the back of his man. Mendes has a poor record at saving penalties, and it's going to continue. Man, I, I can't remember the last time. I'm pretty sure I have saved a penalty with him, but it probably was back in League 2. It's been a long time since then. Remember we had that Romanian for a year in League 1, and he was like the king of penalties. We, uh, we sold him. Mendes sadly didn't pick up those habits in training from him, because he... Like, every time I've got to try and save a penalty, I never feel confident. Lopez stepping inside. Great work. Pat's got a finish, and he puts it wide. Yeah, it's just one of those games. I can already tell. I don't know why, but over the past three FIFAs, I would say, home games that are supposed to be bankers are the most difficult to win. I don't care what anyone says. I'd rather face Chelsea away than a Sheffield United at home, for example. This is awful. That's a cracking little ball, that. Cracking little ball, Pat. Hold your run. Oh, why? I... Oh, it's just... Come on. I pressed the X button for the pass back. He just left the ball. This has just been one of those games. I don't believe in scripting, not one bit. I don't know what it would take for me to believe in it as well. I just don't believe it is in the game. But momentum 100%, and, and rightfully so. Momentum should be in the game. Momentum is a part of real sport. It should be in the game. Um, but, oh, fuck it. Oh. Hand, handicap, for sure. Over the past few years, 100%, I've, I've had a much stronger belief in it. Because I've gone into games, you know, away from home, expecting to be beaten comfortably, and won comfortably. And I've gone into these games, which again should be bankers on paper, and you can't you can't do anything. Like you you can't do anything, and every attack on your goal seems to result in a goal. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Right, moving straight on. Don't dwell on it. Move straight on. Funny enough, the next game is Chelsea away at the Bridge. So yeah, be careful what you wish for, Doxy boy. <laughs> Let's see if what you wanted is what you needed. I can't seem to feel comfortable right now. Is it the chair? Is it the placement of the mic? Well, possibly. Because, like, the way my mic is... Great save, Mendes. I can't see part of the screen. Like, that's a boring thing to start talking about, so I'll shut up now. But that's the one thing that maybe you guys don't understand. When I'm doing this, I can't see, like, where the radar is. I can't really see it. Which is slightly impeding. Not much, but, uh, God, I can be quite boring sometimes. I'm going to stop now. Can't wait till I start earning more money. Now I can move out. Get a proper setup. And then I won't have this microphone issue. It's alright though. It's okay. Don't need the radar to see that goal clean as you like. Patrick Alley doesn't want to celebrate right with the fans, but he's given us the lead. Well, that's gonna do it. We'll take it. And uh, like I said a moment ago, I'd rather Chelsea away than Aston Villa at home. That's just the way FIFA career mode is, man. It's been this way for a few years. I don't see it change anytime soon, unfortunately. So, official halfway point of the season. As you can see, Man City top of the table right now. Shock, horror, one defeat in 19. Six points clear. They'll certainly win a title again this year. Uh, Spurs second, Red Devils third. We're still in fourth, though, but only two points clear of Leicester and four clear of Liverpool. Starting to get a little bit of separation, but still very, very tight in the race for the European places. Oh, and uh, we shall a draw for the FA Cup third round. It's Northampton Town. Cobblers!
No, really. I turned a basketball pitch. Vincent Company's Burnley away at Turf Moor next, and what a job he is doing there with the Clarets in his first year too. Top of the championship, several wins on the trot, and they've just not bored him out of the FA Cup as well. He's doing a tremendous job. Obviously, with the amount of players that left the club in the summer, a proper rebuild at Turf Moor. This is literally like the dream scenario for Burnley fans. Let's be honest here. You've got a young manager, a uh, Premier League... Uh, I'm not sure. What, would, he, would he be called a Premier League legend? Certainly a Premier League icon. Great save there. Um, and then all the players that left, all the, uh, the seniors, you know, Nick Pope going to Newcastle, great signing for the Magpies, yes, but more than good enough for a Premier League side, too good for the Championship. You had uh, James Tarkowski going to Everton, uh, obviously uh, Collins left for a big fear, it was 20 million to, uh, to Wolves as well. Uh, you know, Ben Mee left the club, you know, huge, huge, huge staples of that club leaving in the summer. Lots of young players coming in, obviously from Manchester City with his connections, uh, Egan Riley uh, coming in, you know, Harwood Bellis, uh, I think, was it Harwood Bellis on loan or Egan, I think it's Harwood Bellis on loan, you know, crazy, crazy change, Murich coming in, you know, lots and lots of young players and top of the championship and as things stand, odds on to win it, I mean, it's absolutely a dream scenario for Burnley right now, everyone talks about rebuilds and, and how exciting they are. People forget about how challenging they can be for a lot of clubs. For, for many clubs, it takes a long... Oh, referee. It takes a long time. Wow, is that a straight red for Brownhill? Goodness, he did fly in, to be fair. Um, it takes a long time for clubs to, to reap the benefits of that. But if you look at Arsenal right now, with them going eight points clear this weekend with a win over Spurs yesterday, and Man City losing at Old Trafford... Oh, fuck's sake, Pat. Losing at Old Trafford, you know. Um, they've... They've had to go through what was a terrible start to the season last year, but through those hard times have come what could potentially be their first Premier League since the Arsene Wenger days, you know. And I think for a lot of clubs, you know, Manchester United now is starting to click a little bit under Eric Ten Hag. It's great to see. It can take some time, but I, I, I really think that Chelsea should embrace that and potentially, potentially Liverpool as well. The Chelsea one's quite strange, really, because... You know, after Abramovich, Potter comes in to replace Thomas Tuchel. I think everyone was... Well, to be fair, considering it was Chelsea and they've got a history of this, maybe not surprised per se, but... Slightly disappointed, maybe? But, you know, I, I mean, obviously my best friend's a Chelsea fan. His dad, massive Chelsea fan. Both of them wanted Tuchel to stay. But Potter coming, it was like, OK, all right, fair enough. Maybe they're going to do things differently. But then they've just spent... All this money on uh, on Mudrić, great, great young player, but um, you know the, the question marks over the eight and a half year contract. I mean, I don't know, I don't know. It's a strange one with Chelsea. You just keep on thinking, when are they ever gonna accept a rebuild? You know, and I think really with Liverpool, it's a Liverpool's a bit of a. I think with Liverpool, it's a really unlucky one. You know. Because they've they've had some amazing Premier League seasons, and of course they were they were brilliant in the year they won it. They had a good chance of going undefeated, but lost that right towards the very end. But it was an incredible season regardless. But they've had brilliant seasons alongside that campaign, yet still finished second to what was an unbelievable Man City team. But in the season where they've struggled, Man City, they have also struggled even more so. You know, and I think mainly due to a hangover of last season, being burnt out from chasing what would have been a historic quadruple. But even so, with the, the changes that could possibly occur with, you know, the possible departure of Mohamed Salah and a few of the, uh, the seniors there, I think I think it could be a fun time for a rebuild at Liverpool as well as Chelsea too. And there's like you come. Oh, great save, Keeps. He may be shocking at saving spot kicks, but otherwise he is sublime. Kimura, Dalton, Ledesma and Bauman off the bench to wrap it up. Yep. As soon as Burnley went down to 10 men, it was only going to be one way this game. Bauman with his, I think, first or maybe second goal since coming in. Doesn't get much game time. He's decent impacts up this lad. Yep, first goal for Bauman, not second. Taking a while to get it, but again, all, all those appearances have come from the bench. This guy, this guy doesn't start. Right, there we go. Big 3-0 victory and a great way to close out the calendar year as well. Fourth place is currently ours. If we can hold on to it for the rest of the season, it'll be a dream second year in the Premier League. All right, so January window is here, and straight away we've got a bid for Janssen, but 
I mean, he's not growing much now, but he's he's such a solid player. He's our Jao Cancelo. I really like him, so I'm keeping him. I don't I don't think we'll do anything in January though. Oh, Sanders is 75 rated now, man. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we got just over five and three quarter mil in the budget, but right now top four. Why would I make changes to this team? Right, following game, Newcastle away at St James Park and a chance to pull even further away from any outside and keep ourselves in the top four. So we have major ambitions of making Europe for next season. For this being our second year in the Premier League, that is a that is a big ask. But oh, pat off the woodwork! What can I say? I'm just a very ambitious person. Very ambitious. And what what comes with being super ambitious, obviously, is unfortunately the inevitable disappointment where you don't meet all of your very high expectations. But I've just always been this way. What can I say? I was talking to someone about this very recently, you know, because my mum, I don't really get this wrong, my mum is the most happy-go-lucky person you'll ever meet. Like, she really doesn't want much out of life. She never has and she never will. But for me, it's like I've always, even as a kid, I've always just wanted so much. I've always tried so hard. I've never accepted things as they are. Always believed I can get better, I can do better, I can be better and so on. And it's weird, but it's the exact same even in my, like, online personas or my gaming whatever it's like no i've got to do better got to be better you know it's like call of duty when you rank up i'm like no i've got to get to the next level now i've got to the next level now i've got to get this xp you know like you just can't be satisfied to play the game i've got to get more and more and more you know i don't think it's necessarily bad to be this way like, there's, there's no right or wrong way to to live life if you will but um yeah I'm not going to lie, it has been the greatest source of my uh, disappointment, I think. You know, not meeting those expectations. You know, I think that um, book I've, uh, I've, I've been listening to, The Chimp Paradox. Oh, Keeper! The author, the professor talks about that. Like, it's not so much the, uh, the the event, it's your reaction to the event, if that makes sense, that depresses you or disappoints you or upsets you. It's very rarely in life the thing that happens, but your response to the thing that happens. Anyway, oh, Mele Spila! Spot the ball, where is it, mate? It's not in your hands. Pass put in the back of the net. What a howler! It's a great lesson to learn in life, and one I learned far too late, you know. You, uh, you can't control that many things in life, genuinely, but you can always control your reaction to it. And Chimp Paradox talks about that a lot, you know. You've got you, and the, the the chimp is very highly emotive, and, and who you are, it can detract you from that, you know? I never listen to audiobooks, never. Um, I'm a big reader, I love reading, but, but I don't listen, I, I love listening to podcasts, love listening to podcasts, but uh, they're not audiobooks for some reason, I don't know why. I much prefer to actually read a physical copy, but uh, yeah, it's been alright, it's been okay. Um, if anyone wants a, a real good recommendation on a book that can help change your perspective, without shadow of a doubt, probably the best book I've read in the past couple of years that's uh, non-fiction, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. I highly, highly encourage it. It's, uh, it's harrowing, but uh, it's well worth a read. It'll, it'll really change your outlook on life. There's a book this year called Atomic Habits I want to read as well. Um, I think the author's called James Clear, I think. Something like that. Um, you know, my friend read that, so it was really, really good, so I'll look into that myself. I, I, I used to never read. I used to never, ever, ever read. Now I can't get enough of it. I really enjoy it. It's really, really fun for me. Anyway, I'm absolutely dominating, mate. I'm freeing it up here. Oh, it's been a brilliant run for Docs FC, and it continues with a win here at St. James's. Yes, we had that big loss home to Aston Villa, but just a blip. How do you respond? Just like this. Three wins on the trot. And it is lower league Northampton Town at home next in the FA Cup third round. Strong lineup for the game though, taking no chances. If this is going to be the year we get past that hurdle of the last 16, I've got to take every game seriously, no matter the opposition. The dreaded last 16 hurdle. This is this has got to be the year, man. You know, seriously. I'm in great form right now, feeling good. You know, we've stayed pretty much completely injury free. This has got to be the year. Got to be the year. Surely. Big win here. Comfortable route to the fourth round. Come on, this has got to be the year. Also, I've got the Kimura brothers starting in this game for the first time. I love it. I love it. It's a free little arc. The Kimura brothers. Oh, they passed to each other. 
<laughs> I love it. You know, people say all the time, how can I make Korean more enjoyable? And I, I often will give this little tip for you. You know, there's loads of tips I could give. Maybe one day I'll make a video on it. But, like, make little storylines up, you know? These guys, they might not be brothers. They might just share the same name. But they could be. So we're saying they are. It makes it cool, you know? It makes it more fun. Oh, I'll tell you what, we've, uh, we've been largely in control of this game, if not dominant, but... Oh, Mendez! Oh, Mendez! 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 Oh! But uh, right on cue, I was going to say, all it takes is one mistake or one bit of genius and you've lost your lead. Man, we saw a goalkeeper, Eris and James just... Oh! oh. They happen to you and against you. Mendez with the fumble just about got away with that there. Almost there, 16 minutes. Not quite as convincing of a win as I thought it would be, but... That's going to wrap it up. Dude, this guy is, like, ridiculous in the air. Like, seriously, float a ball towards his head. He'll win the duel nine times out of ten. Well, I was slightly nervous for a brief period of time, but in the end, that second goal killed any kind of comeback chance whatsoever. Fourth round, here we come. But we know for sure that the fourth and fifth round we can get through. The sixth round, that's the problem. Sorry, third and fourth round we can get through. The fifth round's the problem. Right, okay. Before that Everton game, let's see who we've got. Fingers crossed... Oh, tough one, that. Tough one. They just ended our winning run, but that was at home. This time away. Okay, all right. Let's see if we can get our revenge there. Oh, some big bids coming here as well. But these are for starters, so it doesn't matter what they are. I'm turning them down. Branco, wanted by Bologna and Carl. That's a big bid as well, but still no, because he's still growing. And he's been brilliant. Kovacavich is stopping now, but even so, he's a staple of this team. And of course, I'm not selling you to Kamura or Ivan. Nope, they're all staying here. Right, let's see if we can squeeze in a couple more and it will end before that Aston Villa game in the cup. Next up, Everton at home. Struggling under Frank Lampard this season, both in the game and in real life as well. Should be a banker. But you know when I say that, we often lose. So it's not a banker. It's going to be a tough game. There are certain teams I always see... Oh, how many times we it to work? There are certain teams I seem to always struggle against. Like There are no easy games against them. Aston Villa is one of those teams, man. They are such a hard team to beat, either home or away. I'm not looking forward to that. Another shot from range. Oh, I saw that coming before it happened. I saw that coming. Top bins, no chance for Mendes. Emmy Buendia with a bullet. There are just certain moments in a game where you can tell a goal is going to occur. First of the season. Eh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I knew this was going to be a tough game. Despite, on paper, being the far stronger team in far better form. Just, again, I said it right at the top of the episode. Uh, don't believe in scripting, but handicap 100%. I think now it's just become far too hard not to believe in it. Camera, Pats on side. Lancaster. Oh, and again. Just can't beat the keeper, man. Getting under chances, but he's saving everything. Go on, Pat. Win that, mate. Ah, oh, such a frustrating game. Ah, oh, man. Just a yard or at least a foot off the pace in this one. It's not quite... Working the way I need it to. Pat, great swivel. Oh, my God. Any other game. Any other game that finds the back of the net. Any other game. Get in. Right, pick the ball at though, man. We've got to win this game. We've got Palace in the week. And I might rest all my players for that game there. And focus on the Aston Villa game in the cup. Because, I mean, our chance of qualifying for Europe might well be determined on getting to the FA Cup final. Because, yes, we're in a European place in the Premier League right now. We keep on slipping up in these games. We'll fall out of it quickly, man. We are still the outsiders for especially a top four place. That's a great charge down from Pat. That Lopez has done well. Lancaster's got a finish. But, of course, he doesn't. Oh, man. Comment below, man. What, what do you guys think? Do you think handicap exists? I, I have to say, you know, let's not debate scripting or momentum. But just purely today, handicap. What do you guys think? Personally, over the past two or three FIFAs, I've totally changed my mind. I went from no handicap to definitely handicap. Games like this, just to me, prove it. I say prove it. You can't really prove it 
officially as Pat's got a finish and this time he does! <sighs> and a 15th attempt, finally! 2-2, two -two, we'll have to draw. Well, we'll take it. Postman Pat delivering the comeback with two goals in a 2-2 two -two draw. I love that. Let's try and squeeze in one more game then against Crystal Palace and then we'll end it on there. Yep, lots of changes for this one. Not resting the entire team. Pat's still out there. Kovacavich is still out there. But most are going to be saved for the Aston Villa game in the cup. Let's try and close out the episode with a big win here. Come on. Aston Villa, the only team that we've lost to in the past, what is it now, 10 games, 11 games, great run regardless, so that is going to be a tough game now, oh, we can really go into it with another win here, not back to back games without one, need to get a win for the good form, oh, oh, Mendes, what a save, what a save, he definitely won't get in drop for this game man, he's huge, that's a lovely ball through that, Mendes again, Man, that is big. I want to take my starters off, but I feel if I do that, I'm going to concede and I'll lose. At this point, I'll take the point itself. Mendes to McLean. Oh, what a touch on the chest that is. Oh, brilliant. Oh, what a chance to win it. Patrick! Oh, for God's sake. Someone get that ball and rip the magnet out of it. I'm sick of this, honestly. How many times? I've taken my starters off now, so I can't see us winning from here. But... Oh, Naylor, surely! Yeah! <laughs> it's the OG! The OGs! Just come on! Well, maybe this is handicap working in my favour right now, because with a weaker team, we are going to close the game out. As the subs come on, the starters make way. They're the ones that see us get the win. That is a massive, massive victory in midweek because we'll have our starters fresh for the Villa game in the Cup and we extend the unbeaten run too. That's a big win on Wednesday night, that. Right, boys, that will do it for today. So, big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we'll return in the next episode with that FA Cup fourth round trip to Aston Villa with 15 games to go in the season where we're now seven points clear of fifth place Liverpool. Dare to dream, boys. Dare to dream. I'll see you for the next episode very soon.